I'd like to talk about a quote you have, which is, I am more convinced than ever that great storytelling is the crystal key to being successful in business. My question to you is, how do you get better at storytelling? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I, I, I'm interested to hear if you agree with that or not. I do. I, because by the way, as I wrote this, I thought to myself, there are going to be a lot of people who don't agree with this. There are going to be a lot of people who think like product knowledge, engineering, like uh, product excellence is the number one skill. And, and I've thought a lot in my head of, is that a valid argument? And I, I, again, I don't think in most things, I don't think there's one right answer, but look, to, to answer your question, first of all, the reason just to give a little bit more context, but behind 280 characters, uh, the reason that I think storytelling is the crystal key to being successful in business is because when I think about, I think the hardest part of a business is getting from zero to one. And I think in zero to one, when you think about how much storytelling you're doing or like what are, what are the biggest moments in the business, storytelling connects to those things, right? So in the early days of our business, what were the biggest moments? It was our first hire. It was raising money. It was getting our first big advertiser. All of those are examples of great storytelling. Convincing Discover Card to spend money with us when no one knew who Morning Brew was. Why in God's name would a massive brand trust us with their money? Our first big hire, when we didn't have a foundation, when it wasn't clear that we were going to be a business a year from now, how could we possibly pull off that person deciding to work for us when we didn't have a clear healthcare plan or 401k plan in place? And then uh, what was the last one I said? It was big hire, big advertiser, and oh, and raising money, convincing 28 people to all put money into um, this business that at the time had never raised before we were never founders before. We had no business model. All we had was 30,000 subscribers to an email newsletter when email was not considered to be a viable business. To me, that's all storytelling, all of that. Um, and, and it's different from bullshitting. I think it is the connection of vision, confidence, and planning. Um, how can you get better at storytelling? I think a lot, I think so much of it is practice. And I think it's, you know, the, the old adage practice makes perfect. I think it's perfect practice makes perfect where it is being so incredibly aware of little tweaks you can make every single time you're storytelling. And, you know, for me, I think the reason it comes so naturally is growing up my dad, like my, like I said earlier, my dad and I had the closest relationship, but he was incredibly hard on me everything from correcting my posture to anytime I said like, or um, he would tell me not to say like, or um, like I was trained to articulate clearly at a very young age. And now in retrospect, it was like the greatest gift he could give to me at the time. I thought he was a complete asshole for it. Um, I think it's a, it, I think it's a lot of practice. I think it's also adopting a, um, I don't give a shit mentality or adopting like a, I've been here before mentality, right? Like I think, and it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, but there's always a proper level of nerves. And I think the way you maintain that proper level of nerves is by spending enough time preparing such that you real, like when you spend time preparing, you realize that it's a big moment, right? Because you've spent time preparing. But then I think it's the like, this isn't that big of a deal or I don't give a shit mentality that doesn't tip the scale from like nervous to nerves that lead to like uh, uh, degradation of quality of your ability to storytell. And for me, like as ridiculous as it sounds, whenever I'm talking to a big person or I'm speaking to a big group or I'm speaking to like a billionaire, all I continue to say myself is 
just because they have a billion dollars doesn't mean they're endlessly fulfilled. Uh, that person, that big group of people I'm talking to, all of them have fears and anxieties. That group of executives that I'm telling about the future of media, yeah, they've been in industry for 25 years, but their businesses are being disrupted by businesses like mine. And it's almost uh, like I would say most of the time I'm, I'm pretty humble. Um, I'm not overconfident, but I actually like forcing myself into overconfidence when I speak because I think it allows me to operate in a zone of uh, what I call like, you know, nervous equilibrium. 